only going to be a matter of time before we had to close the gate. Effectively, we couldn't grow canes that could actually support some decent bunches. And the canes are getting smaller and smaller as they couldn't get water, they couldn't get trace elements, and eventually we would have had no assets to irrigate the farm with because the, the mains would have closed down. Peter Irvine has seen some ordinary water in his days as head agronomist with the country's largest table grape grower. Water quality at the company's biggest farm, a 283 hectare block at Menindi in far western New South Wales, hit an all-time low in 2004. The biggest problem we've had here is that we're watering out of a, a lake as part of the, the Kopi Hollow, as part of the Menindi Lakes. It has some serious issues in terms of salinity, which has been a long, uh, well-known fact. We're also having a lot of problems with calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate gets into our drippers, blocks them, uh, blocks our main lines, makes it very difficult to fertigate. The worsening drought was compounding the problem. The dwindling water supply was warming in the summer heat and large amounts of calcium carbonate was dissolving into the water before settling in the irrigation system blocking the pipes. We were probably looking at going to no, to no crop at all. We were going to just cut all the bunches off. This is 2004 season, which we pick about at the start of 2005. Uh, we were just going to cut all the fruit off and just try and maintain the vines in some sort of state of health so they had somewhere to come back from if it, if it rained and the water quality improved. But the rain didn't come and, willing to try new methods, the family-owned and run business turned to technology from an Adelaide company called HydroSmart International. I'm just going to take this processor box. Paul Pierce is HydroSmart's managing director and has been pushing the credentials of the technology for the past seven years. He maintains particle physics is the way to fix problems caused by minerals and chemicals in water supplies. Unlike any other company of its kind in Australia, HydroSmart claims to target all elements in water. That includes iron, magnesium, sodium chloride, calcium and bicarbonate. But all the fine details on how the technology works is shrouded in secrecy. Paul Pierce's colleague, scientist John Johnson, signed off on the Official Secrets Act back in the 1990s after working on an aerospace experiment overseas. Through the research they conducted using a, a sophisticated particle physics facility in Europe, the one in CERN in Switzerland, they arrived at the um, realisation that you could disrupt the bonding mechanism of electron pairs, which is a particle physics principle. Uh, and in that discovery, they worked out that they could have mineral crystals uh, collapse, if you like, and let go of their bonding mechanism. One hydro smart unit is worth about $5,000. Our technology just goes on the pipe and there is a power draw of $10 a year. So for the chances of the winds that it produces for people to apply it, um, we think the contrast between ours and the others is it's like David and Goliath really in terms of the um, benefits that are available. But we are coming up against the mainstream mechanical engineering and chemistry driven structures that are, have been working with the farmers for a long time. HydroSmart International has customers everywhere from Bendigo in Victoria, where there are level 4 water restrictions, to Asia, where the technology is attached to algae-affected dams. Should be enough there as it warms up. We can in Menindi, Brett Irvine is a HydroSmart believer. Two units were fitted on the farm because of its sheer size. Brett Irvine says there were immediate results, most obviously with the breakdown of the white crusty lumps of calcium carbonate that had developed on the drippers and in the pipes. Obviously that changing from hard calcium carbonate to a gummy sort of calcium carbonate that can flow out of the pipes, that was a very visual one for us. Uh, we certainly had iron, zinc and a lot of trace elements all of a sudden becoming much more available and we put a lot in the ground so when we got a bit back it was a very rapid response. Most importantly, the following year when we would have expected probably nothing. The canes wouldn't have been big enough to even roll onto the wires. Um, we had canes. Um, so we've actually come out last year um, able to break even quite easily. And here we are only two years later and we're looking at a, at a very good outcome. Further tests showed the pH level in the water dropped from the mid-nines back into the high eights, releasing more food back into the soil for the vines.
got uh, 150 acres of vines here on this particular property, and we've got another about 140 on another property which is also connected to our water systems. And we haven't got enough water really to, to uh, give them a huge quantity of water, so what we have got we need to make very good. Darry Osborne is a South Australian institution when it comes to fine wine. His Darrenberg vineyard in McLaren Vale was suffering from similar problems with mineral build-up on drippers spread over 60 hectares. We used to spend a fortune in, in, a, in a terrible job it was going around cleaning out drippers. Um, and uh, somebody said to me that uh, the system of HydroSmart would, would actually... Uh, tend to dissolve the, the iron that was blocking the drippers, this iron bacterial stuff. And uh, so we, uh, we tried it out and, uh, and it certainly did. After two or three years, it's all clear. Darry Osborne reckons the Hydro Smart system has improved the water to such an extent that the grapes are better, the vines are stronger and there's no need to fertilise. One of the bonuses with this system was, of course, uh, we use it on the garden and you've only got to look at this lawn to see how green it is and yet I don't put any fertiliser on it. And this water before, in dry year like this, the lawn would get quite sodic with the hard water and it would go sort of brown and yellow and not, not look very happy at all and it used to yeah. take a lot more water. And now, of course, it's just, just luscious and green. One of the things which was noticeable in some of the heavy ground, you used to get where the drippers was, you'd get a sort of white deposit on the soil show, a white crust. Well, that's all disappeared now. HydroSmart is also being used at Adelaide's most recognised agricultural school, Urbre. Robert Grivel looks after the aquaculture side of things on campus. So Robert, tell me about all the advantages of having a Hydro Smart hooked up to this supply here. What, what have you found since installing it? Well, I've found since installing the Hydro Smart, I don't have to clean the filter mats every day. It's every third day now. And a, a change of water is a uh, drop considerably. I used to change water every second day, do a third change, and now it's only once a week, which is a saving. And um, all our water is recycled, which uh, goes back to washing down or or wash, you know, into um, hydroponics. What about um, growth rates of the fish as well? The growth rate, um, I've got another comparison system over here without um, HydroSmart on it. The growth rate where I'm finding out that we can we get them out about uh, probably four or five weeks earlier than the other system. So they're becoming a bigger fish? A bigger fish and um, less fatalities too, I've noticed. Oh, Hi, Chris. What do you think of this Coalulet test? And it's fairly um, positive, isn't it? But there are many that are sceptical about the big claims being made by the proprietors of technology like HydroSmart. Chris Saint from the Cooperative Research Centre for Water Quality Treatment in Adelaide is one of them. We all know water is a sort of sexy thing at the moment. It's big in the news. Um, people in the Western world, I guess, are starting to really appreciate the full value of water. And I guess there are a lot of people out there who are going to jump on the bandwagon and, uh, and try and make a buck out of, out of treating water. Chris Saint believes without the nod from either a reputable scientific journal or an independent science or research agency like the CSIRO, consumers should be wary. Certainly if, you, if you're talking to a supplier of equipment that you think can be very useful for you, um, ask them if they've got the evaluation data and you know, who it's been evaluated by, whether, whether the um, data's been published. Um, if it gets a bit too technically complicated, think about you know, calling in an independent expert to give you, give you some independent advice because it could be a, you know, a fairly significant investment that you're thinking about. Chris Saint says there's often a generic format and scientific language used on the websites of such products that many people wouldn't understand. The CSIRO has also been critical, saying positive feedback posted on these websites isn't objective. But Paul Pierce stands by the HydroSmart message and says there are several hurdles preventing his somewhat unconventional technology being taken seriously. I think that might be more to do with the nature of the relationship with scientists and government now in Australia where scientists don't have independent freedom to do research. It's all a uh, funding driven approach and as a small team for us chasing the funding it takes a lot of time and energy and we, ha and we have and do do that. We're currently looking at setting up another trial with the CRC for wastewater but it's a very slow laborious process. 
back in Menindee, Brett Irvine says he'll continue using HydroSmart. And he says with the ongoing dry, it looks likely that the technology will soon be a feature at Table Grape Growers' Northern Territory grape farm. The sceptics often don't have their own dollars on the line. We're a company that's highly reliant on getting grapes out of this region. We have a long supply chain into Coles and Woolworths. This is a very important time of year for us. So it's very important for us to make it work here. When times get tough, you've got you to look a bit laterally. As an agronomist, sometimes you're thinking, OK, this is not conventional, but let's give it a crack. And the results have been even better than we thought. And uh, I'm not making money out of uh, being involved in this, but uh, fantastic result. Already.